More on this story, our digital producer Emily Cristobal recently sat down with our Lynn Kawano. Here's some of that discussion. We are now joined by Lynn Kawano in the Digital Center to discuss more on this story. You know, putting things into context, what does this letter tell us about the long-standing concerns with the Red Hill facility? It validates for a lot of people that this was not a new thing when we learned about it in 2021, when these two leaks happened and the one that really sickened at least 6,000 people, military families and civilians, that this was not the first time it happened. And, and people like Marty Townsend, who worked for many years for nonprofits, who said this was a danger, you know, BWS, DOH, all the concerns that people had for so many years, this validates that their concerns were legitimate. Uh, even if, you know, Senator Akaka didn't get the answers he wanted, at least to know that it was out there and that it was on his radar. And Marty Townsend from Earth Justice tells me this is a as far as she knows, the oldest record, a high-ranking politician questioned the Navy about the leaks. This is the earliest record that we know these leaks existed and started more than two decades ago. Absolutely. And you know those leaks, you know, 20 years ago. Do we have any idea of the extent of those leaks? We don't, partially because I cannot find any return letter. So the secretary, Secretary Winter, the secretary of the Navy, as far as we can tell, you know, didn't respond. Perhaps he did. It just was not one of the letters that fell into my desk in my research and all this. And this did take several weeks to go through to determine the authenticity of it because it's so old, because Senator Akaka is no longer with us. The late senator passed a while back. It's very difficult to go back and say, you know, did you get a letter back from this? And, and people in his office, of course, they've moved on to other things. And it's not something that you sit there and you remember. You don't remember everything from 2006. So it's difficult to say, uh, A, if he got a response, or B, just the extent of these leaks that he discusses in the letter. Absolutely. And this letter is coming out at a time when the military is starting to empty the fuel from the facility. And as litigation around the 2021 spills continues, could the Navy's prior knowledge of these leaks impact those ongoing cases? I do know that this letter is part of the lawsuit now. Uh, so all of the, the people who are suing with the attorney Michael Green, um, about 100 people is what Michael Green says. That lawsuit is moving forward with trial coming up in March. And he says this letter is now going to be part of that. And I do think it will have an impact. When you think about it, when you hear what's being said in this letter, it would impact someone that the Navy knew. There's no way they can say they didn't know. And in this letter, Senator Kaka even talks about the tanks being emptied and cleaned, which means there were issues. And the Navy had been worried about this for quite some time. I do think this could have an impact on the trial, the upcoming trial, as well as just, you know, the public interest. People want to believe our U.S. military. We want to believe that they're being transparent. And so knowing that this was actually happening for, for two decades is something that I think is going to have an impact on a lot of people's perception. Yes, thank you so much for all that information, Lynn. And thank you for your reporting as it's going to be ongoing for the investigation, the emptying the fuel and all of that. Back to you guys.